next we're going to have a brief um, mindfulness moment and we are then going to have a, a discussion. We've never spent enough time talking with you and talking with each other and so we're going to spend some time doing that before we then get to hear from Arcia. So I'd like to introduce next my one of my stress reducers, <laughs> who is Ellen Flynn, who is a psychiatrist who works at the Women's Medicine Collaborative and she's been teaching all of us about mindfulness-based stress reduction and is um, always has her own perspective on things that are very, very helpful for her. Come help us out. <laughs> I know that walks around with meditation now. So um, I will use the microphone when you can all hear me, yes? I have a really loud projecting voice. Uh, Do we want her to this? <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is a relevant um, question. So thank you, Karen. I'm so uh, politic about um, how I offer you stress reduction. Um, so, so we're going to do a little bit of what's called mindfulness practice. And mindfulness is actually, it, it's in the news. I mean, it, just this last Sunday in the New York Times, I think it was this last Sunday, um, they did a whole piece on mindfulness. So there's mindfulness in healthcare, there's mindfulness in business, there's mindfulness, you know, in, they even practice mindfulness as a pentagon. So, um, and they're using mindfulness now in the military to help veterans who go to war. So this is working with that male brain that's either in the bedroom or in the battlefield to actually <coughs> generate and cultivate stress hardiness so that when they go, they're able to encounter stress and meet the challenges, but just as challenging as when they return home. And so what mindfulness is about, people have a, you know, yes, it's in the culture, but people also have a lot of ideas about what it's about, but it's somehow about religion or, you know, floating on a cloud, you know, you're doing this great posture. And it isn't really about any of that. And so mindfulness-based stress reduction was created by John kabat at the University of Massachusetts uh, Medical School in 1979. And <clears throat> does anybody know the formal definition of mindfulness? It's very short. Sort of be here. So it, what it is, just like a short sentence, is paying attention in the present moment, non-judgmentally, on purpose, right? So where the rubber really meets the road is paying attention in the present moment, on purpose, and here's where the hard part is for, I would say, most women, non-judgmentally. <laughs> so Judith talked a lot about you know the, all these wonderful opportunities to cultivate stress reduction, and what mindfulness actually does is that what you were talking about about the looping brain that's actually been shown on on uh, fMRI scans that we actually cultivate a brain that continually goes around and around and around and thinks all the time. But what mindfulness does is it starts to cultivate attention. On purpose, and then the mind is going to wander away. It's going to do it. It's going to do what the mind is trained to do. And when the mind wanders off, just bring it back. Just start again and come back to the simplicity of the present moment. So, all those patterns of thinking and ruminating and remembering, and oh, did I do this or did I do that, or you know, maybe if I had said it this way, oh, the mind's wandered off. So what we're going to do, there are many mindfulness practices, and what we're going to do tonight is, first we're going to stand up. So we've been sitting for a long time, and we've been working with our gluteus maximus muscles. So let's just raise our hand up, stretch up, reach up, if you can. Stretch the body, feel the feet just down on the floor and the hands floating up and on the out breath. Let the arms and hands float back, and then we'll do that again on an in-breath, raising the arms up, stretching up, looking up, feeling the feet rooted, and then on the out-breath, just allowing your arms to float back. Just do some rolling. I know I'm taking more than my 10 minutes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I am a source of stress for her. <laughs> Drop into the body. And that's one of the things that we cultivate in mindfulness based.
day's stress reduction, is cultivating just awareness of the body. And one of the most portable ways of doing it, we can sit. Um, one of the most portable ways that we can do that is attending to the breath. So I'm actually going to sit. It's really hard to do meditation standing, although I've yet to fall over. Um, and so what I'd like us all to do is to sit upright in the chair and place the feet, both feet, on the floor. And just put the hands comfortably in the lap. Sometimes when we, when we close them like this, we notice that before we know it, we're getting tight. So whatever position your hands are comfortable and easeful in, and just allowing the eyes to close if that feels OK for you. And if it doesn't, just looking down, particularly if you're sleepy, just looking down at the floor <laughs> or at the table. And I don't know why anybody would be sleeping. Um, so just allowing the gaze to rest and taking just a few moments to embody a posture of wakefulness and a posture that embodies dignity. When was the last time anybody asked you to cultivate a posture that embodies dignity? And so we can do that for ourselves and that's really an opportunity for empowerment. And so just settling into whatever position you're in. And we'll start with hearing. So just becoming aware of sound. Just knowing that sound is occurring, the sound of my voice, the somewhat irritating sound of the ventilation. <laughs> The worrying, noticing that maybe there is a little irritation or physical discomfort associated with hearing an unpleasant sound. Maybe there are sounds in your own body or in the room around you. So not trying to make sound happen or force hearing, just letting sounds come and go. And then as you do that, just becoming aware of the fact that you're sitting. Perhaps feeling the position of the body, the buttocks on the chair, and the back on the chair, if you're leaning against the chair or the upright, the hands on the lap and the feet on the floor. sitting in body right here and right now, allowing yourself to fully arrive, letting go of thoughts about the future and ruminations about the past, just being right here and right now in your body, sitting here, hearing in a room full of fabulous women for a couple minutes. Being fully here. And then shifting your awareness to the fact that you're breathing. And here, just noticing that there's an in breath and an out breath. Wherever that experience of the in breath and the out breath is the most dynamic. So for some people, that's at their nose or the chest expanding and contracting the belly, inflating and deflating with the in-breath and the out-breath. Just resting the mind on the breath. The in-breath and then the out-breath. As you do this, you may notice that it takes like a millisecond before the mind starts going, oh, this is boring. <laughs> what am I going to have for dinner? Oh, I had dinner. Oh, wait a minute. What about grocery shopping? What about tomorrow? So when the mind wanders off, this is a really, this is the key piece of mindfulness. You really can't fail. When the mind wanders off, just say, ah, oh, wait, oh, the mind's wandered off. I'm thinking about the grocery list or 
the want to do list or what's going to happen in the meeting tomorrow. Just noting the mind is wandered off the breath and then without judgment, just escorting the mind back to the breath. And the breath just as it is. We're not trying to change the breath in any way. Knowing that there's an in-breath and an out-breath. And if the mind wanders away a bazillion times in the next 30 seconds, that's fine. It's not a problem. And we're not really trying to get anywhere. We're not trying to change anything. We're just dropping into being right here, right notice that the mind is already leaning forward and saying, oh, what are those bells going to sound like? Am I going to love them? Am I going to like them? Just resting in the breath, the body, in this moment. For some of you, that was an opportunity to drop in. For some of you, that may have been an opportunity to encounter a busy mind, a restless body. And really what this is about is not <coughs> trying to make yourself relax. It's about encountering who you are in this moment, embodied and saving time. And coming back again and again. It's really about cultivating skillful means so that all those other things about letting go of the to-do list or the worry, not letting it go, just coming back. Because I could pretty much almost say with 100% certainty, whatever you were worried about or ruminating about or anxious about was far more complicated than just dropping into the ground. So there's a great simplicity that cultivating them. It's like cultivating a muscle, right? When we like first start doing yoga or weightlifting, right? We start with like a Campbell's soup can, and then after a while, I really do have to think about this is the self nurturing, like <coughs> cultivating the strength of the muscle. And it's your nervous system. And it's a part of the nervous system that's responsible for healing, well being, ease, and balance. And I don't think there's enough of that in this culture right now. So these are ways, and there are lots of other ways of doing it. So thank you for your attention. And your